Welcome back. This is video two. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to, now that we have cut our UV edges for this simple creation, how to unfold them out so that we have a unique representation for all of the faces. Now, there's two ways to do this. The first way is I'm going to hold down right click in the UV texture editor, and I'm going to choose UV from the marking menu. Next, I'm going to drag a selection over all of my UVs that are present. We may only see four UVs in the 0 to 1 space, but that's only because we're seeing the UVs on the front. There are really eight UVs we're selecting because we're selecting through to the back and grabbing the four that we can't see. Once I have these selected, the first thing that I'm going to try here is using the Smooth UV tool. It looks like a little cross, and it's in the upper left corner of the UV texture editor. It can also be found under the Tool menu as Smooth UV tool. This is going to bring up two little sliders. One is called Unfold and one is called Relax. If I click in the Unfold region and then drag my hand to the right, that's going to unfold this. And I could then manually take these UVs and sort of separate them out. Although you can see to get everything flipped and oriented in a way that looks like what we're trying to create, I'm going to have to do quite a bit of work unflipping these shells. It can sometimes be also also can be hard to uh, see and understand what's flipped the correct way and what's flipped the wrong way. To do this, I'm going to click on this icon called Toggle Shaded UVs Display. It looks like two windows, one of them being blue. You can also find this under Images Shade UVs. You want all of your faces to be blue while doing this technique. And you can see I unwrapped these a second ago because I knew that they were going to be red here. You notice as well when I have this display turned on that I have a purple look and that's because I have blue on top of red giving me purple. So that's the Unfold Smooth UV tool. It's kind of a manual way of doing this. Sometimes this way works better um, and sometimes for more complex objects this way works better. However, I'm going to try a different method right now. So I just hit Q on the keyboard to undo that option, or uh, essentially went backwards with Control Z and then hit Q to get my pointer tool to get out of the Smooth UV tool. I'm now going to go to Polygons and just choose Unfold. There's a direct Unfold option which does this automatically. So I have all eight of my UVs selected and I'm going to choose Unfold. And uh, man, that was easy. That automatically gets this uh, unfolded out. Uh, nothing is overlapping anymore. And I can take a really close look at this and uh, see when I hit 6 how everything is being represented. I've got pretty even distribution of my UVs. So I'm actually really happy with this method. Um, I was able to first project UVs back in the last video and then cut UVs, cutting them apart. Once the edges have been cut, I can then unfold and whatever was open based on the cutting will tear apart and whatever was not cut will stay sewn together. That's the real purpose of this uh, unfolding and cutting method, is to find a very fast way to get the end resulting shape. Now my last stage of this is I want to take these UVs and I want to scale them to the correct size. I'm going to turn back on the image in the background by clicking on the blue haired face. You can also find this under Image, Display Image. I'm going to select all of my UVs and get the Scale tool, which is hotkey R. And I'm going to scale my UVs to roughly the correct size. Once I get this close, I'm going to use the Move tool to position my UVs exactly on top of the already existing texture. Now if you don't have an already existing texture because you're doing this from scratch for a different project, then you can just align these and position them however you want. I often call this process of packing your UVs Tetrising, as for me it reminds me of playing the game Tetris. Your goal is to try and take all of your shells and pack them into your 0 to 1 space, your textured area, in a way that makes your shells as large as possible and fills up as many holes as possible, so you're not wasting extra area. Another way I sometimes describe this is imagine I've got a big sheet of paper where I can make stickers from, and I'm asking you to make stickers that are as large as possible and have as much detail as possible on them. You'd want to have less of that peel away, throw away section as you possibly can and make sure most of what you're using is applicable sticker. 
that's our same goal here. We want to make sure that we're applying our UVs onto the most large areas that we possibly can and that we're not really throwing away extra parts. In this case here, you can see my head has now been mapped and as a result of the UVs being placed over this area of the texture, my head shows up as a head. If I was to nudge these UVs even slightly, you can see what happens in the viewport as I manipulate my UVs around. It's really just representing a different area of the texture. You're only going to get a correct representation when your UVs are in the correct region. So that's the first method for creating UVs, and I think it's a very versatile method. Now that we've got this piece done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Show, Isolate Select, and turn off View Selected. I can also just again hit the green little icon in the viewport bar for Isolate Select, showing all of this. And because this is completed and I like to keep my scenes organized, I'm going to take this head object and in the channel box under display, I'm going to create a new render or a new display layer for it by clicking on the icon that is a blue ball, white plane, supernova, if you want to speak of it that way. Uh, I click there, creates a new layer called layer one, and I can use the V for visibility to turn this on and off. If I double click on layer one, it opens up the edit layer window. Here I can rename my layer. I'm going to call this something like UV'd already. Something simple so that I know that I'm actually done with this part of the model. And I'm going to hide it completely right now. Essentially I'll be adding parts to the UV'd already layer as I go. And then when I'm done, I'll just delete this layer. This may not be necessary for really simple scene files like this. But when you get to really complex scene files, I find scene management techniques like the one I'm using here to be very beneficial to make sure I don't lose track of what I'm trying to get done. Now that I have this, uh, I'm going to move on to the next piece. I'm again going to make an Isolate Select by clicking on the Isolate Select button in the viewport bar or by going to Show, Isolate Select, Isolate Select. I could map out the body in the exact same way that I mapped out the head moments ago. But instead, I'm going to map this with a different method to show you another way in which to create your UVs. This time around, instead of projecting everything at once, then cutting and unfolding, I'm going to project all of my face areas separately. To do this, I'm going to start off by selecting the front face and the back face. Now I'm going to do this because both of these are oriented in the same axis and I can save time doing it this way. There's no reason though as well if you have a little bit more time to spare why you couldn't just map all of these separately. I'm just trying to cut down on the amount of time it takes. So I'm in the face component mode. I select the front face, hold down shift and select the back face. Now again we're looking at these two faces based on the Z axis. So I'm going to go into my UV texture editor, turn off my texture in the background, and go to Create UVs, Planar Mapping, Options. Here, all of the options that I used previously, I'm actually going to keep because I'm already projecting from the z-axis. I will say Project, and you'll notice that I'll have a UV representation. It's purple because I have a blue because it's facing forward, and that's correct, and I have a red because my backwards is being mapped from the front, you can see how the text is legible here. But the face itself is oriented pointing backwards. So therefore my face has been represented as flipped. I'm going to take these faces and I'm just going to move them out over here, out of the 0 to 1 space. For me the 0 to 1 space is like a closet. And I want to try and keep everything in the closet later on. But my goal is going to be to organize everything in a free area and then pack it back in, organizing it all at once as a final step. In the next video, where I'm going to continue on, I'm going to look at how to flip these UV shells, and I'm also going to create the mapping for the other parts of this, and pack this all back into the 0 to 1 space. So please stay tuned for video number 3. Thank you.